Okay, this is being recorded. This is the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 17th of August. Thanks for being here. So I've got uh, agenda topics that have been placed. I think um, they were, they came mostly from you, Jonathan. So let's take a look at them and we can add additional topics as needed. Sharing my screen now. Okay, so Google Season of Docs announcement, issue monitoring, so update missing redirects, and the V hosts that didn't change, those are two good topics for sure. Um, any other topics that people would like to put on the agenda? I was just doing some work on the wiki migration sheet. And so we, we can look at the slow but steady progress there. Any other topics you'd like to put on the list? Well, I wanted to um, discuss if it is appropriate for this meeting, uh, Mark, something related to uh, configuration as code, because I was working last week and I don't quite understand the purpose of tools, for example, uh, section inside configuration. Uh, and specifically when I was putting special tools, I thought they will be appeared in the Docker image, but they didn't. So just maybe I misunderstood the purpose of tools section. That's a very good one. Okay, so I'm going to list tool configuration choices as as the alternatives. And there are choices like um, Jenkins tool installers, um, Docker image includes the tool. Just Helm chart count. Oh, ooh, Helm chart's another good one. Yeah, Helm chart includes the tool. Static agent includes the tool. Good. Those are those are all excellent. Uh, those are, that's an excellent topic. What about Any scripts? Other? Do we count CLI? Do we count scripts and? Or Google? I would or, I would um, not put Ruby scripts Switch. in an oh oh I see well that's I a, can I think write that's a script a, that's going to install it yeah. I'm not recommending this but um <laughs> okay all right so I'm also going to put Meg's crazy ideas for crazy crazy groovy <laughs> system groovy ideas that's great and I like those those are brilliant that's those are a lot of fun because as sure as Meg suggests it. We know that there is someone in the world who has done it and done it and loves it. So absolutely good. System Groovy script. Meg ideas. is not that person. Meg just knows people who tend to do things like that. Exactly. That's brilliant. And, okay. and part, you know, and there's some questions to how much we want to encourage those people or do we want to just, you know, don't ask, don't tell. We know they're there, but let's not encourage anybody else to join their lives. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, any other topics? Um, if the tool was a plugin, then Cask is an option, right? Or is that Jenkins tool installers? Uh, well, so plugin plugin is a different thing. So let's put that. I'm going to put that separately, as uh, at least in this context, uh, comparing a plugin and a tool in Jenkins vocabulary. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a there's a distinction there, and the distinction is. It may actually be quite important to understanding why there are so many ways to do tool installation. Right. Okay, good. Other topics. Okay, well, so then let's get started. 
Right, so we've got um, Google Season of Docs. Uh, Zinab has been Abu Bakar. Abu Bakar uh, has been accepted as the uh, Google Season of Docs uh, writer for Jenkins. Um, the Community Bridge Projects. Whoops, Bridge and other projects are still um, under consideration. And so we're not, we're not giving up on those right now. Uh, they would, they have the same challenges they did before, need funding, et cetera, need mentors, but looking forward to this. Uh, and this one is Jenkins, uh, and the focus will be on Kubernetes, Jenkins on Kubernetes. And just to clarify, this is not related to Jenkins X project. It is not, that's a good point. So uh, yeah. not related to Jenkins X because Jenkins X is a different, a very different approach to how we, how you do Kubernetes. It's really absolutely cloud native, whereas Jenkins looks an awful lot like a large application you deploy to Kubernetes. And it's a different, a very different paradigm, very different way of working. Yeah, there, there is a Google Season of Docs project for Jenkins X as well, and it has a writer assigned to it also, but that's a, it's a different project. Uh, Mark, uh, are you saying that the uh, Zyna proposal uh, acceptor was about the Jenkins on Kubernetes? Yes, even, uh, though, even though Google Season of Docs says the wrong project description. Oh, oh. yeah, are you a warning about this? Yes, because we've I already... There, it's another topic there. Right, GSUG made a and they made a mistake in describing the wrong project. Okay, okay. And and we've already clarified that. We've asked them to make the correction. We've confirmed with Zinab that she understands that the project she's working on is Kubernetes related, not plugin related. Oh, okay. and yeah, okay. good good catch and extra points for being attentive. That's very very good. Yeah, I was, it's important to read. <laughs> Sunday night when I read it, I was completely dismayed. That's great. I'm glad that you, but that's the wrong project. We absolutely, that is not the project we chose as, as, as the mentoring team, et cetera. So yeah, the, oops. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, anything else on Google season of docs before we go on to the next topic? Okay, issues monitoring. Jonathan, thank you again for your attentiveness to those so missing redirects, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so this one is a vhost change for, oh, right, right. This is, and this one inspires, okay, so Jonathan, I'm going to go ahead, I'm not sure if you can see my screen, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my proposed change. The redirect okay, no problem. said, how to view in your language and it was pointing to just the using book whereas we've got a page in the using book now on using it in your local language so oh I'm gonna, i some may mistype i guess could could have been yes i yeah direct your specific page we should directory them to the page okay what, what was your question meg oh i'm just editing your comment Ignore me. Mm -hmm. Directory is a verb. It was intriguing. Yeah, no, no. In this case, the okay. Now I have to show you the, the commit message redirect, which is a very specific term in the HTTP protocol. Yes. Okay. But directory is not a verb. Uh, no, correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and this one. This one, I'm also going to go ahead and commit it because this Jenkins behind proxy page, I had initially incorrectly classified it as part of a reverse proxying thing, and it's not. This is a proxy, not a reverse proxy. And you don't want to get me started on how, how, that, how crazy that makes me to think that we have two, two, two concepts that use the word proxy that are radically different from each other. So this one, I'm just going to remove the uh, remove redirect for page not yet converted. 
Okay, so behind proxy and reverse proxies has different style to use. Right, yeah, so, so okay. in this context, a proxy is, is a, a hint of, okay, this is, now I'm going to it's date demand myself. in the middle, it, I, 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 it's, I know. Well, it's, it's demand it's, in the middle. Yeah. Like a balancer case, or something. Well, or, or a 15, 20 years ago, corporations were very frightened of giving key, their, their employees access to the internet. And therefore, they would install proxies that everyone has exactly. to channel all their traffic through. That's what Jenkins behind a proxy is talking about. Whereas reverse proxying is something that's very close to the application, is connected to the application and handles traffic for exactly that application. So, okay. All right. So now, now the perplexity here that I, th I think this is ready to approve. But the challenge I've had is that the previous preceding changes, and I think you noted it here, Jonathan, was that we've got changes that are somehow not having the effect that we expected them exactly. to have. Exactly, I, I, it's the, the previous lines. If you go to the hosts, uh, I don't put the line numbers. Yeah, so so yeah. Here, this is a this is the perfect example of it. This URL yeah. is absolutely being redirected, and yet, if I open that page, isn't it work? Exactly, and, and I, I no, don't know how. I can't explain why. why either. I am completely perplexed by it because it everything I know about how it's supposed to work seems like it should. And yet, here we'll even prove it one more time. So this is one that I may have to discuss with Olivier Vernin or with yeah. somebody else who understands Apache redirects because this should redirect automatically. And in fact, it does not. It stops on the wiki page. Okay. And when I, I wrote right on the PR, I put these links as duplicated ones so i observed that they already exists so i put the on our agenda to discuss because this excellent thank you yeah and i wish i could tell you why it's doing it but i just don't understand it I, but it is clearly it's flawed it's wrong and i just don't get it i don't understand okay. And yeah, this this link, the 3204, that is the issue that we originally used to track the reverse proxy configuration page improvements. And it's closed because the page has the new content. And I think it's exactly the right kind of thing that we did. However, the redirects are still incorrect. They just they aren't they aren't improving our they aren't helping our users get to the, the better pages. Okay, so uh, with these updates, I already update our weak migration control. So okay. maybe we have uh, another graphic images on the, on the second uh, tab, weak tab. Okay, so let's take a on, look. On the bottom, on the bottom, the statistics, there on is the an, another distribution. Tab. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the graph is missing. Oh, it's up here. No. Nice. Okay. And okay. So is, is this this data is computed live from the from the yeah. contents of the sheet from the first tab? Yeah, that tab. Yeah. So if you update the stats there, the graph is updates here. So Fair. we can uh, uh, it's following the our progress. Now we have a lot of done and a lot of thought available to work on the blue one. So, and available in this case means there is an issue recorded in GitHub? Yeah, there are, there is issues. So we, the issues are available to contributors. The yellow one, it's waiting for issues. Yeah, so, but, so for, for me that means available, someone has has created an entry in a, as a GitHub issue, and that issue is 
probably good enough that a new contributor could actually start work on it. So when exactly. October first, when we when we enter October and Hacktoberfest, this set of right now seventeen would be a good a good starting point. Exactly. I'm planning to visit the, the another uh, waiting issues. I'm planning the place to to migrate the pages, what pages need to be split in several ones, so we can uh, stay prepared for the next hack, hack Derby faster or new contributors. What did you get? Think about. I like that a lot. That is that sounds yeah. wonderful. We know that beginning October 1st and continuing through October 31st, there's a major initiative promoted by DigitalOcean uh, mm -hmm. called Hacktoberfest. And last year we had over 50 contributors. No, no, I take it back. I think it was over 100 contributors during that month. So we, we need to arrive at the start of that month with probably 20 or 30 or 40 um, ready to go instead of the current 17. So the, the, your, your progress in helping us triage, review, and create yeah. well-described issues is very, very valuable. Okay, so I will start to work on this topic in the next days. Excellent, thank you. Nice. Now on the suspended, and these are I believe these are ones where their work has been started, but they're waiting for a change. So these are usually actions for me or for Oleg, right? Yeah, no, it's suspended. It's like a uh, plugins that uh, was uh, uh, breaked uh, or pages that is not more important to oh. documentation. Oh, oh so okay, sorry. So suspended. suspended. Got it. So suspended is something where we're not going to do anything with it. It's anymore. No, it's it, anymore. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's another form of done. It's a done with us doing nothing. Okay. Yes. Done it. if I've given up. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so no more work to be done. Great. No okay. more work. And uh, there is a, uh, a issue. Uh, it's not closed. You can see the line six. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, everything okay. The redirecting is working, but uh, the issue is it, it is open. Oh, okay. So I should be able to see that if I go here yeah. and filter to and status, status column. Yeah. Clear all and then done. Not closed. Exactly. Okay. So monitoring. Oh, see, and I. Oh, oh, good. This is one we could discuss with Vlad. So that's excellent. Let's look at this. So Vlad, we're going to, we're going to put you up for a question here. Okay. So this is convert the monitoring wiki page to Jenkins.io. Yeah, we started, but not finished yet. Ah, okay. So this one is all right. So this one has an attached pull request but the pull request i assume has not yet been merged oh no okay we did merge it was nice okay okay so well so wait a sec let me look let's look at the content why did we not close this then because okay it's the page is still under development but there's a ah okay this provides links to various monitoring. Yeah, but I think that's all that the original page, all the original monitoring page did, if I remember correctly. Let's look at it and see. Okay, everyone close your eyes and shame as Mark hacks the URL to get past the redirect. <laughs> okay. Cat light. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. This oh. is something completely different than Yeah, I, I can just provide a slight comment on this. I was working on monitoring page, which is part of our current documentation mm -hmm. and uh, created initial uh, release of that page but it is not related i guess to this page because it is i thought a little bit outdated maybe well it, it's not even just outdated this is a 
they are both monitoring concepts, but my initial interpretation of the phrase monitoring Jenkins before seeing the program was a tool like Datadog or like, let's see, and we've got the, the examples here on the page that you, you provided for us, uh, Datadog or Prometheus and Grafana or Java Melody, those are tools that, that watch the health of the Jenkins server itself, of the Jenkins controller. And, and those are things that an administrator uses to say, is my Jenkins running well right now? Whereas this page, Monitoring Jenkins, is talking about tools that developers place on their desktop to pop up a notification that, that, that their job had a problem. And they're, they're completely different facets of the notion of learning something from your Jenkins server. So, so I understand why this one is not is not closed then because yeah so that one i would i would shift it to to be done let's see what's what's the correct status for that jonathan can you help me it's um oh, here. it's uh, uh you will you close the issue or not no because it, because the so issue in progress in, in progress. Progress. Well, so in this in case, progress. it's not even, it's, it should just be available because it's, I don't think anyone started the writing on it to uh, say, oh, this is how you use these build notification tools. Okay, so maybe it's interesting, put uh, some notes on the comments to, because yeah. the issue is, it's, oops, there has a APR closet already. Right. Ah, okay, and so that may uh, indicate the we comment need to... on the the GitHub, not in the week. Right, and so this one is. Let's do that and go to the GitHub issue. Okay, so here we want to to break the link, and I'm not sure. Can I? Am I allowed to break the link? Yes. Okay, good. Break the link to the PR, so there isn't a PR matching it. And I'm going to put a comment here in the text. This is this is a, a really terrible, awful example of how not to do how not to describe one of these issues. So, so Jonathan, mm -hmm. please don't take this as the right the example. It's this should have been much better described than it was. The uh, okay. monitoring. Uh, Vlad will keep working on it or not? Because uh, it's oh, a hybrid. So, so there. Good need. point. Yeah. So Vlad, I assume we, you would not continue working on this. You you've picked other things you're working on. You okay if I take it away from you? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Very good. Yes. No, in fact, it's available. <laughs> right. <laughs> the monitoring pay concept in this page is related to developers being notified of a change of status in one of their jobs. So why isn't that renamed something like monitoring Jenkins job status? A I good agree. Idea. Monitoring it's, Jenkins is that's yeah, not what I it's agree. about. Yeah, it should be. So so sh for example, if a test fails in a job the, from a recent change, the developer needs to investigate why. All right, so what we should really say is use the document conversion instructions to convert monitoring fr from the wiki to a Jenkins.io, a new Jenkins.io page um, notifying developers of job of changes. Or maybe we just call it notifying developers. What users do you recommend? Say, uh, notifying uh, users, uh, even better. That's yeah. good. Yes, very it's good. Because it's not uh, only developers using Jenkins. Right. Yes, notifying users. Uh, the new page describe should describe the various tools available to provide desktop notification of uh, status changes 
and let's see things like uh, pass or succeed success the failure success to unstable unstable to success etc should we specify status changes for the job we didn't oh yes change. job status changes very good yeah. yes don't need that so this is not about monitoring the health of the Jenkins controller reuse um, let's see agent failures etc a better description now everybody okay with that is the better description and correctly not assigned yeah, it's okay all right excellent Good. Okay. So it's it's been updated to show that it is now available and it's zero. It's okay. Oh, oh cool. Good. Updates to zero. It's automatically. Okay. Excellent. So the, it wrong. recomputed all by itself. That's great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If the next tab it's a, a issue maker generator <laughs> to the next one. And just right. uh, put the output. Okay. Uh, anything else that we need to do with regard to wiki conversion progress? Jonathan, any topics you wanted to be sure we covered here that we haven't yet touched? No, it's completed to agenda. Thank you. All right. All right, so Vlad, configuration is code, question and discussion. Would you like me to, <laughs> to start on this? Yes, please. Or you, you could you could start or I can I could go on blathering about the difference between a plugin and a tool, but tell us tell us what your experience has been so far. Help us understand and that way that way we make sure we give good get a good conversation started. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, I would be glad in case if you correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So you have much longer and better experience on this. Uh, so in general, my understanding by watching all these videos on YouTube and uh, like uh, watching different uh, recordings, uh, that uh, configuration is code as code uh, is the modern way and current way of uh, uh, configuring the Jenkins instance, which we are trying to configure. Um, and this is the way to go, basically. So inside configuration as code, uh, which is plugin, basically, and it is, for, uh, again, the sources are on GitHub. There is uh, inside, uh, I believe it is Jenkins YAML file, it is called, uh, there are different sections, uh, and one of the sections called tools. And maybe I misunderstood the purpose of this section, but uh, my understanding that, what, at least was my understanding, that whatever we put inside the tool section, this tool will be installed automatically uh, inside, for example, I was uh, playing with Docker image. Uh, inside the Docker image of the Jenkins, and we'll find out that tool. So I was exploring two alternatives, basically. One is installing this tool by modifying Docker file and creating your own personal Docker file and kind of manually, uh, in quotes, installing this specific tool, for instance, JDK a specific version of Madden uh, as the tool and so on. Uh, and I thought that in case, for instance, just in case, if we put certain tool inside that section, it will be also installed. But maybe I misunderstood I the purpose of this. I'm not 100% sure. 
but I believe that the tools in um, configuration as code is installing for where you can put tools on the Jenkins controller itself, which I believe is like not the recommended way to go. But on the, I think system, am I right, Mark? The on the system configuration page, I believe there's a place where you can you can configure tools. Yeah, you're you're certainly close, Meg. So there's yeah. there's there's some subtle subtle things happening there. So Vlad, you you've you've got a really really interesting combination of things that you're considering, right? So on the one hand, Docker images, and the the promise and the benefit of a Docker image is it can provide us a stable and static set of initial files in the file system that we're going to use for that image. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the a common pattern is I want to build a piece of Java code. I need to build it with Maven. I will reference the Docker image that the Maven project provides called Maven colon 3.6.3. And that will assure me that the, the image I'm running starts with Maven already installed. And so in, in that case, the Docker file is, is doing what you were describing initially as it's already got the tool inside the Docker file. However, there are people, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just trying to add what you exactly mentioned. One approach is to base this image, Docker image, on Maven, which uh, ensures that Maven as the tool exists over there. Or base from, for instance, uh, LTS image of Jenkins and manually install Maven inside Docker file as the tool and provide our own Docker, Docker image. Uh, by right, and the, now the, there, that's a, that's a good place to clarify. If, if I've got a Jenkins, ma a Jenkins controller, gotta quit saying master, a Jenkins controller and the Jenkins controller we, we generally prefer to not run builds on the controller. We want builds to run on the agents. So installing Maven on the controller actually won't help. So because we don't want to run builds on the controller, we want builds to be run on agents. And so, so we don't install Maven on the Jenkins controller because we want, we want to keep builds off the, off the controller. The build should run on agents that are separate from the controller. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, say Maven as an example, mm -hmm. uh, because it may be uh, any tool. And also I was planning, uh, and maybe I, I have wrong approach, please correct me, uh, as very simple example of running Jenkins, doing agentless uh, instance, if it is possible. So running just controller and uh, enabling Docker inside that controller. So we can use pipeline, for instance, declarative pipeline and installing through plugins.txt file, blue ocean or whatever plugins we need. And inside pipeline, we can specify whatever tools they will need by doing agent. So another Docker agent, uh, Docker agent will be, and inside that pipeline, we can specify whatever tools we need. But, so this is like approach I was trying to follow when creating something like for future tutorial for uh, 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 like showing how to deal with, not for production of course, how to deal with well, the pipelines and to show it is possible to do. Well, Val, Vlad, uh, uh, just to share uh, how you use Jenkins, Docker, and GitHub here all together. In our company, we keep Jenkins working and orchestrate all jobs. So, for example, uh, our systems, we uh, job, uh, when we commit something in GitHub, Jenkins just, just get the the push notifications so we start to build in the docker image and using ephemeral containers in a build server not inside the master node so the check out the project there uh, build the fat container uh, put the application side 
uh, commit the fat container in uh, our another repositories uh, about the versions and then we publish and the final final job work it's uh, clean up the build server so because we are using ephemeral containers there is no garbage to work on it's just temporary so just uh, Jenkins on the master and agents uh, use dockers uh, just to build the applications and it's, it's close everything at, at the end. I, and uh, we keep the Jinx file configuration at the GitHub too, and the Docker's file, there's another repository too. So it's everything working together. Right, so you have classical kind of controller agent configuration where executing uh, uh, all execution are done by the agents, but controller manages everything. Right. Well, yeah, and, exactly. and and I think Vlad, actually, you were also angling. You were also moving towards that same kind of thing as you were talking about Docker in Docker, because even if you configure a controller, if you allow it to run Docker inside that controller, mm -hmm. when it launch when it launches a new Docker image, it will treat that as an agent. And so, so you were actually doing agent-based development as well. It's just well hidden from you. So you, you ask the controller, start a job. The controller starts a job. And the first instruction in the Jenkins file says, Docker file this. Mm -hmm. And what Jenkins does is creates an agent mm -hmm. using that Docker file and connects that agent to your controller. And so now, now it's all on the file system of your of your of the computer that's hosting your controller. So, in terms of execution capacity, you actually didn't get any extra execution capacity. But the file system is completely isolated by the Docker container, and mm -hmm. and it's as Jonathan said, it's ephemeral. It lives only long enough to do the work and then goes away. So, so the technique you're envisioning is actually a good example of the technique of using, don't build on the master, build on agents. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, when I say ephemeral container, it's because uh, it's a small container, it just have the Maven installed. So uh, right. I call them container Maven, execute what I need to do and throw away. Right. It's and the same for Ruby or uh, mm -hmm. Composer or, Mm -hmm. any kind of tool. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for pointing this out. And the uh, uh, reason why I explored this solution, because I thought, well, it's another reason to uh, amplify that, well, Jenkins is smart enough to do this job communicating between controller and agent by itself. You, as the user, don't need to establish and think about how this controller and agent will communicate, which uh, ports they will be used, and so on. Well, socket communication the way how you run this docker image important but but not much of work so jenkins does a lot of work because it is like very good software but uh here i well uh wanted to mention that i was trying to explore um configuration as code plugin mm -hmm. which is kind of separate from docker or like different plugin and uh, different thing. And when I was trying to put some tools in tool section, it was not appearing to inside Docker container. No. no. Is it because it is controller or is it because of I'm doing something wrong? Or it's because that's not, how, yeah. Well, well, so it's, yeah. It, there, there are some subtleties there that it's it's probably important that you understand the subtleties so that you know when you would use which. So a, a Docker image is generally assumed that it will contain all the tooling already. A Jenkins tool is a concept from well before the days of Docker. Uh, Docker wasn't even a glimmer in some people's in in their the architect's eyes when the concept of a Jenkins tool was created. And what a Jenkins tool is, is a, a chunk of Java code that knows how to install a tool onto an agent if requested to do so. And, and, and it's the if requested to do so 
the, the way we make a request to install a tool is we, we either refer to a label that says, oh, I want an, an agent that's labeled with this, or in pipeline, we might use a with tool name, like with ant or with maven wrapping block. And then, then Jenkins will look, do we have maven? Oh, we don't. I'll go grab the installer that matches the, the label that you just gave to make sure you have that installed. So I use, I use tools and labels all the time with my relatively static agents because it lets me say, I need Maven 3.6.3, here's a tool for it, and the installer is located on this HTTP server. If you don't already have it, copy it from there and install it. And Jenkins will do that for me. So, so the distinction is Docker images don't need that, they are they, they could use it conceptually but ultimately you would have to inside the the build steps with docker you would have to make a, a request for with ant or with maven and then it would go do the oh now install a new copy of maven mm -hmm. right mark this part i understand oh. how to do this but uh, i was referring to jenkins as code the tool section Mm -hmm. So the two section, um, or maybe uh, uh, I should address different like people who developed this plugin. What is the purpose of tool section inside Jenkins as code? So it, it's used to define those tools. Uh, maybe I can show. A, would it be okay if I show you a demonstration of a of a configuration as code file that has tools in it? Yeah. So let's let's go ahead with that because I yeah so let's look at and and this is a public repository so I can embed the link to it mm -hmm. uh, let's see so let's look here okay. here and if we look at the LTS with plugins okay so here is a jenkins.yaml file okay and is that text readable do we need to go a little bit larger there maybe that's yeah. better yeah that's good enough yeah, and it was tools get to okay where is ah here we go tool mm -hmm. okay so what this jenkins configuration is code definition file shows is it's going to define a tool named ant mm -hmm. with one of the tools one of the ant tools will be labeled ant dash latest and if someone asks for ant dash latest it will into a subdirectory named apache ant 1.10.8 un unzip the thing it downloads from home.markwait.net such and such and install it so, so, but I, I think that's, that fits the concept that you've already got of what is a tool installer, right? I see, because I was like uh, doing this without, uh, without any properties, I guess. And I was using name and uh, home, I think, something Mark. that is specified for Git. Mm -hmm. But thanks for pointing this out. Well, so, so Meg, go ahead. You had a comment. Oh, I was going to say, this is what this is for the tools configuration that appears in the UI. I don't, I think the system configuration page, right? I've never seen in the documentation any place where it explains well what that tool definition is. Agreed. So I think, it, and I think Cask, you you can see in Cask what they put together was they sat there and looked at the system configuration file and tried to pick up everything that was there. Mm -hmm. So. And, and the other slight one is that apparently the only documentation for CASC is the readme to the GitHub repo. Well, there's, there's lots of documentation on configuration as code, but yes, it is, it is still not nearly enough for what all the people, what people would like about it. So this is the, the page that Meg was referencing, the system configuration page. And when I click the ant installations button here, you'll see the ant dash latest with an install automatically checkbox. And here is the downloader 
that or the file that will be downloaded and the subdirectory that will be created when it's downloaded. I see. So I guess if I understand correctly, whatever we put over there, it will be it will dynamically create portions of UI which user can use while configuring the Jenkins instance. Right, right. Yes. So so this and and the configuration as code. If we look at configuration as code, it will even do one step better for us and it will, let's see, where is, oh, here it is right here. So if we view the configuration, it will show me the definition of all those things that I just showed you. So that, that thing that I did was, is here in this configuration as code thing that I can just view and mm -hmm. and it's ready to copy and paste so that I can copy it right from here and paste it into a text file mm -hmm. now you you mentioned git and I I have to apologize I maintain the git plugin and the git plugin is has some flaws and some problems in its use of the notion of tools that I have to just apologize to for outright. So I, I get specifically is has some has some interesting strangeness and I apologize for that. You'll you you mentioned it. One is this this thing here where it says home and name and that's all it has. And that's that's legitimate or just a name but there is no other tool in the system that has that strange and bizarre behavior. So JDK behaves much more normally. Maven behaves much more normally. So Vlad, does that, did that help at all? Uh, yes, yes, it helps, Mark. Mm -hmm. Now, Meg, your, your point on that there, there isn't really a, a clear description anywhere in the documentation that I recall of this notion of tools and how tools can be used well and effectively and when they should be avoided. Right? The, the, right. If you've got Docker right. images or you've got Kubernetes containers, right. then tools are, are typically not used at all. If you've got static agents or you've got agents where where you can't really put them in Kubernetes. For instance, you've got a bunch of Raspberry Pis, or you've got um, cell phones attached as agents somehow. <laughs> Tool installers are quite helpful then. Go ahead, Mick. But, yeah, no, I, when I first started looking, I thought, oh, if I want to use Maven in my, for my pipelines, then I need to get this configured on the system configuration page. That just made sense, and then it's going to float on down, and. And wouldn't it be lovely when I, you know, doing Docker, I say, pick up all the tools that are configured for this Jenkins instance. That all makes great logical sense to me, but I don't think it has anything to do with how Jenkins works. Hmm. Right. And, and I don't know any place that ever explains that. Yep. Good. Very good point that the, the notion of tools, the concept of tools and how they are used well and effectively has evolved from the original Jenkins to today's Dockerized and Kubernetes containerized, but the documentation doesn't describe that evolution. Mm -mm. And I guess it is like very complex task to well describe it correctly. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> I think. I think so. At least. You've you've listened to to me and to Meg and to Jonathan attempting to describe various facets of it, right? And we've we've described three or four or five different pieces of the of the puzzle. Now getting that into a clear, comprehensible, well ordered, well organized, well structured thing. Yeah, that's 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 hard work. Yeah, but uh, I guess uh, when I, I start to work with, with you. I study the Jenkins uh, documentations, and there is a point there. For example, our documentations, it's like kind of a book of uh, you know, of our experience, the users. It's not, for example, let's describe the first screen on Jenkins, 
describe the first bottle, the second bottle, the first page, the second page. It's not like a, a manual, a, a user manual. It's so it's like more a book. So maybe because this, we, we miss points like this, the Vlad and Meg, this text for us, because it's not a, a user manual, in fact. Well, but this, uh, well, well taken this point, Jonathan, but this is related to this specific uh, plugin. And we have like more than yeah, yeah, it's because th that plugin it become a page inside the Jenkins. Once you install it, there's a sections for that. So maybe in the future we need to uh, have another kind of documentations guided by pages and fi and features. Yeah. So so the concept that, and I don't know if it's the right concept, but the concept. I would I would make it somewhat similar to the notion of we we have the concept of solution pages. It's pretty weak right now, but we have the concept of solution pages and configuring your Jenkins server might be an entire solution page with yeah. the whole because it's there are multiple ways to do it, right? There's yes, I can configure with the configuration as code plugin that has certain strengths and weaknesses. I can configure with groovy system scripts. I can or or another solution page using GitHub well with Jenkins, where it's really the combination of six or eight or 10 plugins that gives you a really great solution. Uh, and, and those are sort of solution focused, but right now you're right that the documentation is, is certainly not yet solution focused. Mark, on the, um, on the actual UI for tools, what does the tooltip say? Does it even tell you that, like, if you're going to use Docker for your agents, just ignore this? Oh, no, no, it doesn't give you anything nearly that kind of guidance. So if so I have a bug at the software to fix a tooltip. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's a that's an interesting idea. Although, I mean, in a very le without detail, just to warn them, you know, what is what exactly is this used for? And I think it's primarily used for builds that you do on the Jenkins controller itself not the agents, which you well, shouldn't be doing. No, so. for, for me, it's, it's almost exclusively used for agents. So, but it's, it's biased towards static agents, not ephemeral agents. Okay, and non and non containerized agents, right? Most most ephemeral agents are containerized. So yeah, right. it's yeah. But for example, this this setting right here, this global tool configuration for Maven configuration, is is actually a nicely applicable thing for even dockerized environments so there are things inside this page that help with dockerized environments but it's it's certainly not this button for jdk installations right that one if you need if you need to install a jdk you should just ask for the docker image that it is that jdk version uh-huh right and it's up to the user uh, to decide which path to go. But I thought, well, maybe we can make some recommendation at least for new novice user who hadn't uh, right. experienced. And, and it's this is back to the same this the the condition we I shared last week from a a brand new Jenkins user who was familiar with GitLab CI who came to us and said came to the issue tracker and said, hey. I don't understand what you're doing here. And, and I was looking for this, this way to do things with Docker and have agents. And the user didn't realize that they were getting agents just by using Docker. And, and it was, what, what did that mean? We had a very poor description of what they were experiencing. We gave them detailed steps, do this, do this, but didn't tell them at all what the results were of what they were doing. So uh, it just, yeah, we, we, we need better documentation in those tutorials for sure. So just to summarize what we spoke about, is it uh, fair to say that, well, we can use Jenkins as code and this is a very good tool, but mainly in case if we want to configure the agents, not the controller, or is it 
well, configuration as code is actually very, very good at controlling the Jenkins at configuring the Jenkins controller. This the tool configuration here is most commonly used when we have agents that are static, right? That are that they they live for a very long time and we don't mind that they become contaminated and we worry about them. So so configuration as code is is actually primarily focused on controller configuration on the master. Except tools. Yeah. Right. Yeah, tools. I would guess most Jenkins installations that are using configuration as code are probably also doing what Jonathan's team is doing of using ephemeral agents. And therefore they probably don't use tool configuration because they rely on their ephemeral agents to already have the tools. Mm -hmm. right. But it'd be nice if some play, I mean, that's almost a high level discussion, a conceptual thing. It's almost a blog. Right, it's, right. Yeah, you know, it, it would be easier. To, I mean, the, you could write it up to then have the specific details for everything, but it would be harder to get the big picture. Right. Um, yeah. The, the, we need a big picture thing about agents, the same thing, too. Mm -hmm. You know, what are all your different ways of doing agents and what are the pros and cons for each one? Right. Well, at least we uh, uh, have consensus on the term to use no, all <laughs> right right, right. We, we, have, we have made progress on, on getting a, a consensus term although now we've got to do the do the hard work of making the change in all the documentation locations Daniel Beck submitted a pull request just for security advisories and it was what several hundred changes just in the security advisories <laughs> so yeah there's right. a lot a lot to be done to make that change All right, we have we have hit our hour. Are there uh, and we have I think covered all the topics that were on our agenda. Anything else before we close? So we maybe we should take these other topics for a future session because Helm charts are a, a different a, a different technique and. System Groovy Script is yet another technique. So let's remember those for a future session, Vlad, if that would be okay. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we should because okay. if I'm not a Jenkins person, I was just going to say, if I'm not a Jenkins person, a lot of those plugins look like tools to me. Right. I know enough now <laughs> that I know what Jenkins means by a tool. But right. it's not in the outside world. I think a monitoring tool is a tool. Pipeline would be a tool. Lots right. of those plugins would be tools. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the word tool is completely overloaded and, and danger, dangerously close to incomprehensible unless we put a lot more words near it. Right. You know, it's a like JDK installation. For the new Jenkins user, understand that we are very careless with terminology. If right. we find a word and like it, we use that to apply to 22 different things. Right. So we don't Maybe have to, to spell another word. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Mike, and I second your opinion that terminology is very important and great. Yeah. I agree. Awesome. And, it is, and we can't, my thought in, in the writing, we need to get, we, we can fix, we can get more precise with the terminology, even though we're probably going to have to use a lot of adjectives with nouns to make it clear what we're talking about. And we can hope that as other people read that enough that they'll learn to talk that way, but that may take longer. People are, can be such swine. <laughs> Some people. We'll, we'll leave Meg's quote in the, in the, in the recording. That was oh, brilliant. Shoot. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thanks, that was... everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. You too. Bye-bye, Meg. <laughs>